Good day, first world travellers, and welcome back. Today, I'm out and about in Mexico City, once again, very close to Hospital General Station. And in this video, we're going to be exploring two areas that I've mentioned in many other videos before. We're going to be taking a walk through Roma Norte and Condesa, two very popular areas. Let's see if we can find out why. So welcome to Roma Norte. I'm going for a little bit of a walk today to show you two areas rather than just the one. And the reason I'm doing this is that they're often both grouped together, Roma Norte and Condesa, for some reason, at least for people like me, tourists. And on that point, at the beginning of this video where I said that it's a popular area, Mexicans might disagree with me on that because what I mean by that is it's very popular for People like me, people that are traveling, working online, digital nomads, it's a really popular area to live because it's very nice, basically. It's a, it's a more safe area, I suppose, of Mexico City and it's more desirable, I would say. As you can see behind me, there's lots of um, different architecture and it's, it's similar in Condesa as well. And as I've said in other videos, this is just another example of how variety that's not even a word how much variety there is in Mexico City so um, we're gonna head up that way and go to a few little stops and I'll show you a few little bits let's go and also from what I understand Condesa and Roma were very popular with Mexicans back in the day particularly more affluent people and also the Jewish community. The problem was that in 1985, there was an earthquake, big earthquake in Mexico City, and it caused a lot of damage, basically. And that meant that the people who lived here moved, basically. So the Jewish community firstly moved to Polanco and then places like Lomas, Dijapultepec, the rich areas, okay? So that's a bit of a history about these areas. I'm going somewhere now, um, which is a bit of a surprise. Oh my God, I've just seen a sign for the place that I'm going. This is a special treat for old time subscribers. Yeah, we're going to a Japanese place. Yes! Family Matt Beatbox. back in Japan. Hockey, chocolate, banana. Yes, we've got miso soup behind me. We've got cup noodles over there. Legendary Mamafuku Ando. For those of you that watch my Japan videos, these are 60 pesos, which I can't remember how much that is in dollars, but I'll put it on the screen. But I think it's substantially more expensive than it would be in Japan. Remember Family Mart, 7-Eleven, you get things, you know, the curry pan. They're up there. But it says like cheese croquette. I don't know if it's the same thing. I don't think it's a curry one. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> Wasabi peas as well. There's so many things that I remember. Um, I could literally have a meltdown right now. Okay, I avoided having a meltdown. This place is called Mekasa. And I got Pocky. This is very difficult because I have no hands. Where's my sexy blonde girl girlfriend? I just dropped it on the floor. So yeah, croquette thing and also a salmon and cheese thing too. Um, I had a bit of a strange experience saying arigato gozaimasu to someone who was Mexican, but it was slightly strange. And I've just noticed as I came outside, there's a, like a food area to eat. You can have okonomiyaki. If you want to check out proper Hiroshima okonomiyaki, I'll, I'll link the video out up above. Sorry, I can't speak. I'm too confused because of the actual Japanness. Wonderful. I feel violated. Obviously, it's not going to be like Japanese food, authentic Japanese food, but that was diabolical. I might be able to do that again. The um, croquette thing, you know, when I think of that, I think of breaking open one in Family Mart and it's full of curry stuff, you know, but that was all full of potato and cheese and, you know, Mexican cheese. And it has, it's like Japanese food with a Mexican twist, basically. But I'm sure the um, actual cooked food is better. But 
I, I'm not gonna try the Okonomiyaki here purely because I don't want to destroy the memory of it from Japan. But you know, this is a nice place to come, especially if you do like Japan, and it makes me feel like I'm at home again. <laughs> oh God, take me back. Anyway, I've got the pocky to eat, so that's right. Right, one thing I'm noticing about Roma is the amount of greenery, which I knew anyway, but this building up here, which I'll show you now, is, it looks like a car park, but it's got greenery like pouring off it. And I've read somewhere that this is done in Mexico City to uh, aid pollution or, you know, reduce the effects of pollution because photosynthesis, yes, I have a GCSE in science, um, it breathes more oxygen into the air. So, um, you know, if you can clarify this, because I'm not sure, clear it up in the comments as always. Thank you very much. Now, I don't know when this video turned into a reminiscing about old videos video, but it's happening. So another thing that I've done before is visit Pripyat in Chernobyl, Ukraine, you know, the power station. And I spent the day clambering up abandoned buildings. And as you can see behind me, there's lots of graffiti, lots of what looks like abandoned buildings. And as I said earlier, as a result of the earthquake in 1985, a lot of these buildings were abandoned. And this one in particular is probably the most famous one. It's called Condominio Insurgents. Insurgentes, I don't know. Basically, I believe it was like a residential building, apartment building that was abandoned as a result. And I've seen videos where people actually go in there and explore. Um, but since then, I believe that the bottom few floors have been refurbished. So. Um, it's an abandoned building. So exciting. Let's go and look around. Okay, so I'm at the base. You can clearly see down the bottom that there are what look like shops that are operating. It does look a bit dilapidated still. Um, and if we go up there, I don't know if you can see. Yes, you can. The top floors look very much still abandoned. So there's smashed windows. It looks like a hellhole. Um, there was on the side of this building a huge neon sign. It was called, I think it was called the Canada Building because on the sign it had Canada on it. And just there in the middle of the screen where it says TES, that's cool. It's old, uh, old writing, text, signage that's buried behind those trees. Um, that's the sort of thing I love. It's all overgrown. You've got the columns up there. How cool is this? And there are, I've read online that there are talks, well, calls to rip this building down because it's dangerous. Right, I've walked around the back to this hellhole area. There's a sign on the wall. I've Google translated it. it. Says something about going to an office between 10 and six. It was two years ago. That office is probably vanished by now. I don't know, and these doors, no obstruction, locked. I'm gonna continue. So I found the way in back there, but, even though there's a staircase, I could have easily slipped up the staircase, but there's security everywhere. I don't really want to get arrested for trespassing and thrown in a Mexican jail. So you'll just have to, have to imagine what it's like up there. Never mind. So enough abandoned buildings and Japanese food for one day. We're leaving Roma Norte and heading into Condesa. And you can really see the difference between the two because Condesa is full of tree-lined streets down the middle. And these little benches that are over there that remind me of Condesa. I haven't been here since literally my first day in Mexico City. Um, I don't know why, because it is very nice. There's lots of cafes and it's very sophisticated and a lot quieter than a lot of places in Mexico City. But the problem is there's no subway station here and I'm a subway person, so I have to have a subway in the area. What are you looking at? It really annoys me people walking past, glaring at the camera. So this is another example of the wonderful parks in Mexico City. It's good for dog walking, if you have a dog. There's a couple of teenagers over there snogging. Lucky them. And there's lots of sitting areas. I see a fountain over there. Um, and once again, it's just another good example of parks, basically.
So here we are in Condessa. Here's a typical example. Architecture over there. Tree-lined streets. And just look at how different it is from elsewhere in Mexico City. You've also got very colourful buildings. And I believe that the architecture in this area is a combination of Art Nouveau and Art Deco. Similar to Palicio Bellas Artes, where it's Art Nouveau on the outside and Art Deco on the inside. So this is an architecture person's dream. So I think you'll agree, you could literally walk around Condesa all day, looking at all the different architecture, the different coloured buildings, the different vehicles that are around. They're also really cool. If you want to see more photos from Condesa, check out my Instagram, which is on the screen there. And just one thing about this area, I mentioned earlier about digital nomads. And when I watch videos for, of other travel YouTubers or digital nomads in Mexico City, they only seem to ever be in Condesa. And as you've probably seen in other videos, there's so many different other areas of Mexico City, which to be honest, I think are better than Condesa. I think this is overrated. Bit of an anticlimax in a lot of ways, even though it is very nice. So yeah, that's my opinion. Honest as always, um, that's this video done. I am exhausted, so I'm gonna go home to sleep. Hope you've enjoyed having a look around Roma and Condesa, Japanese food, abandoned buildings, and lovely architecture. Don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment. What do you think of Condesa? Tell me in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you later. Bye.